the bottom side and top side and also the left side and the right side of the screen. Mike Berkeran comes in through the top side of the bracket with a 14 win, two loss record and Roger Kirkwood of Silver Lake is 30 and six. And you can see a, a small SL on the uniform of Roger Kirkwood and Mike Berkeran is trimmed around the bottom side And also, Berkman has the knee pads on, so that would be a good way to identify the two wrestlers as well. We're down to a minute, 41 seconds to go in a scoreless first quarter of action. Okay, Lonnie, and uh, you know, after that 145 pound match, I don't think we'll see that much action here at 155. These bigger boys tend to slow down just a little bit. More strength, not quite as much quickness. Both athletes, working to check each other out. Once again, we have a, a taller athlete against one that uh, may not have the height, but uh, may have a little more thickness through the chest. Mike Berkman, of course, looks to have maybe some real good strength in the upper body. And there's Roger Kirkwood of Silver Lake using his length advantage as he reached in, picked up that single leg, and also went for the back heel. And Ben, you take the action from here. All right, and Kirkwood elevates and tries to bring Berkman down to the mat, and he gets him down. Has he scored two? No, he didn't control. He wasn't down there long enough to get control. No points scored. It looked like it for a moment, but you have to keep him down long enough to gain control, and it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. 40 seconds to go first period, and Berkman was able to counter off with a lot of good strength. It was an excellent uh, penetration move by Roger Kirkwood, but it's still a scoreless first period. And now Roger uh, Kirkwood stumbles and goes over backwards, and Mike Berkman was unable to take advantage of the move as they tumble out of bounds. Well, there Mike Berkman might have noticed that he may have a chance to use that head and heel. Once again, we have emphasized the, the link. Roger Kirkwood is a very tall 155 pounder. He's tall enough to be wrestling 185, perhaps. And there's a real nice head check uh, effort by Mike Berkman of the Oakley Plainsman to uh, get the get the takedown and take a two to nothing lead with three seconds to go in the first period. So it is a two to zero count as the time expires here in the first period and Berkman of Oakley is out in front. The officials talking it over Silver Lake's choice and Roger Kirkwood will be selecting the bottom position. Mike Berkman will be riding the top side. He'll set up on the right side of the screen. Berkman of Oakley with the knee pads on and working with a cross face right now. Going to try to work with the cradle perhaps, the cradle series, but now he goes to the bar arm. And Berkman, as you mentioned, Lonnie, shifted to the bar arm, working basically with a tight waist ride. Shifts across to, from the bar arm to a cross chest uh, wrist ride, has the wrist tied up, and uh, Kirkwood flat on his stomach. Berkman with a 2-0 to zero lead, reaches in, tries to get a half Nelson in there, but he knows that he has the lead, and he won't expose his position to try to get more uh, tilt points here, but Berkman with a hammerlock has that arm tied up between his body. Now Kirkwood shakes the arm loose. Berkman steps across and tries to put a half Nelson in from the other side, reaches in, but not very seriously. Both Mike Berkman and Roger Kirkwood pinned their first opponents in this tournament and then advanced to the finals by means of decisions, just regular decisions, and that's what got them to the championship in this tough and very closely matched 155-pound weight class. Berkman now in the cross face will try to hook up a cradle, but Kirkwood comes up standing, almost got loose. It's still 2-0. to zero. The top wrestler, Mike Berkman of Colby, tries to snap Kirkwood back. Tries to snap him back. He didn't score predicament points, and now he has a chance. Can he get exposure points? No, it was close. It was close. Referee Jim Worth shook his head and said, no, the exposure points, the plane wasn't broken. Kirkwood, though, continues to control. Or he, or rather, he's controlled by Mike Berkman. And the clock is running down, and Roger Kirkwood, I don't know how he kept his arm from being trapped. And now this time, once again, watch that uh, top arm that Berkman has underhook. That's what keeps getting free, and that's enabling Kirkwood to get free when uh, Berkman does the underhook, and it's 
It was a good period for Roger Kirkwood that he was unable to keep Mike Berkman from turning him over. But on the other hand, Mike now with a two to nothing lead and in the bottom position. But I would guess that Roger Kirkwood may be a real cradling artist because of his, his uh, size and length. All right, on the start in the third period, Berkman comes up standing easily and scores one on the escape. It's three to zero. Mike Berkman of Oakley leading Roger Kirkwood of Halstead. Now, very alertly, Berkman uses a shuck move to come around and score two more. And it's a five to zero count in this championship match of 155 pounds. And Berkman tried to snap Kirkwood backwards. He has a chance. The count is going. The count is going. And Mike Berkman caught Roger Kirkwood in a move and scored two points in a near fall. Mike Berkman of Oakley wrestling an exceptional match. An outstanding match with a minute 15 seconds to go in the third period because Berkman is doing everything right and he's also putting a lot of pressure on Roger Kirkwood of Silver Lake as Kirkwood has won 30 matches coming into this match of Mike Berkman and the score right now eight to nothing and Mike Berkman of Oakley is having one of his finest showing since the quarterfinal. Well he started strong in the regional tournament and he's just kept getting stronger here in the state championship at 155 pounds. That's what any coach wants his wrestler to do. Peak out in the state tournament. Well, we've certainly seen some examples of that in the 1988 state championships of wrestling, including at 132 pounds, a young man that uh, was 14, eight and one, Clay Keller, that made it all the way to the final. All right, we have an escape, and it's the first point scored by Roger Kirkwood of Halstead. It's eight to one, and Kirkwood tried to move in. Berkman playing with Kirkwood at the moment. Eight to one once again, and uh, two wrestlers both on their feet, down to 25 seconds to go on the match, and the Oakley Plainsmen are hoping for a state champion and Mike Berkman at this point, and it would take something really phenomenal for that not to happen at this point in the match and Mike Berkman working very hard down to nine seconds and the time will run out on Roger Kirkwood of Silver Lake down to three seconds and executing the last move is Roger Kirkwood but Mike Berkman will be on the winner stand as the 1988 champion there's a look at him Showing himself to the crowd, Mike Berkman of the Oakley Plainsman, a 1988 state champion in Kansas, 3-2 and 1A wrestling. And we'll see Mike Berkman come over to the winner's circle to sign the bout sheet. And we have a 167-pound wrestler coming up. It's Brendan Armbruster of Ellis, and one of the only Ellis wrestlers ever to make it to the finals in wrestling history for that school and Regan Green of the Atwood Buffaloes. Regan Green is an outstanding athlete for the Atwood Buffalo program and Green got two pins in the first round and also in the quarterfinals and won a two to nothing decision to advance to the 167 pound class and back to 145 pounds Joe Dreyer there he is a picture of him 145 pound champion Second place was Tim Ham of Minneapolis. The third place finisher for this season was Shannon Peters of Beloit and Brad.